Hello there, I'm Dr. Mark Everard. I'm a scientist. I, I work on rivers all across the world. Love doing that. I'm also an Angling Trust ambassador and I like catching the fish that live in these rivers. Well, we're here today by the Bristol Avon. This is my home river at Great Summerford, and it's also one of the places I, I love to fish. There's a head of roach here, there's plenty of chub, there's the odd barbel, some nice dace, pike, perch, what's not to like, really. And um, what makes it such a good river? Well, many, many things, but one of them is the diversity of habitats that we have here. What is it that makes a healthy river, certainly from the perspective of fish? Well, they need a number of things. They need good water quality, they need good water quantity, in other words, not everything just abstracted out of it. They don't need too many invasive species uh, that destroy the habitat and, and eat the fry. But habitat is one thing that we can all have a direct um, control over. And fish need habitat for three primary functions. That is where their food comes from, whether they eat directly from it or whether they eat the invertebrates that live in it. It's also vital for refuge. And by refuge, I mean when there's spate in the river, when there's predators coming through the river, fish need somewhere to hide. And that means all life stages, not just adult fish, but eggs, fry, juveniles, have to have, to have a diversity for that. And the final thing is nursery habitat. So where fish can spawn, where the young can go, where they're um, kept away from the main flows and, and the attentions of predators, and where there's plenty of microscopic food and progressively larger food for them as they grow. So if we take a river like this one behind me, the Bristol Avon, with the, with the, the weeds in the margin and, and submerged plants, that's harbouring all sorts of invertebrates, snails, worms, you name it. And that serves the needs not just of single species of fish, but multiple species of fish. And more importantly, perhaps, the different food needs of fish, right from being the larvae through the ju juveniles to the fry, to the adults, to the spawners. Here on the tail of the weir, where the current just picks up and opens the gravel, you can see this clean patch of gravel below us, where the chub and the barbel were spawning last week. So having this diversity of flow really matters. As important, as we look a little bit down the river, is the diversity of vegetation and the slow, slow water behind it, where the fry can drift, because they can't swim actively, they're too small and they can drift into slack water, which is a refuge from the fast flows, full of the microscopic food they need, and of course, then they, it gives them refuge from predation as well. One of the principal bottlenecks to fish populations is that the habitat isn't suitable for the fry. So fry refuges in particular of vital importance. In the river behind me, there are plenty of uh, cabbages, the, the underwater leaves of yellow water lilies. And they're wonderful, wonderful fly refuges. When the water's pushing through, the fry have slack areas behind them that are rich in food and give them refuge and so forth. If that's lacking, then the, uh, the flow deflectors can, can do this job or other woody debris that is left in or indeed dragged into the river to allow the fish population to be replenished. Now, this is a great example of a live willow deflector. We haven't engineered the deflector, the branch just fell. So what we did is we pinned it, and you can see these tall willows and sallows now that have, have joined it. They've grown up and they've um, reinforced it with age. And there's a massive diversity of vegetation has grown on the inside that is a nice lagoon when the river's in spate and is a wonderful refuge habitat and feeding habitat for fry and smaller species most of the year. I've given so many talks on this to angling clubs, to angling trust workshops, to science conferences, all sorts of um, fora, that I thought it'd be quicker just to write a book, frankly. This one is called River Habitats for Coarse Fish, so it's a bit of a giveaway what it's about, isn't it? And if you look on the back, of course, the Angling Trust is one of 10 logos on the back, because 
a well-functioning river, a healthy river, is good for many things. is good for wildlife, aesthetics, but of course is great for fish and fishing. What can a buffer zone do to improve river habitat for fish for wildlife? Well, look, here's the book and here's a series of photos over the years. This one is before we started and you can see the bank is completely eroded, no real useful habitat and that reed margin away from where the cattle can reach was just stopping the fishing. We put in a nice chestnut fence, the farmer was happy and by the next winter you can see the amount of habitat diversification. And then a few summers later you can see the channel is almost half the width because the, the vegetation's marched out, trees are beginning to come in and stabilise that bank. And if we look over there now, that is the same view. Mature willow trees, plenty of vegetative diversity, plenty of refuge, plenty of food, plenty of spawning habitat. The river is about a half or a third the width, so the current is being amplified where we want it to scour the channel with plenty of marginal habitat for all those fishy needs.